talking, I don't sweat that. If they don't trust me, either I respect that. If she be down the ride, oh, I bet that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is J.H. How you doing, Postal Family? Are you good? Are you cool? Are you clean? Are you feeling iry today? You may not be feeling clean because you're probably at work. So hot out there, you sweating in places you didn't know you had places. It's a tough, it's tough. Cooking nationwide, you hear me? We cooking. Um, want to talk about uh, a lot of things that are going on. Um, something new just popped up with Mr. DeJoy and yeah. So somebody asked me a question and I'm going to answer this question before we talk about Mr. DeJoy. And um, here it goes. How old are you? And is it more lucrative to go to put your money into the S fund and C fund versus a L or G or I fund? Um, I'm not going to disclose my age. I'm a couple years from 50. It's number one. And I cannot give any. And that means any financial advice. But there is a guy that is on YouTube that specifically speaks to federal employees on how to invest your money and what's the best way. What's his name, Jay? I don't remember. But um, if I could, I'll try to leave a link to his videos in my video, um, in my first comment. I'll try to pin it in the comment. But if not, um, it's a Caucasian guy. He's he usually does about seven minute to ten minute videos. Very very informative. Um, yeah, he's there. He's well dressed. He has a little clock behind him. Very informative. Okay. Uh, next question. Forty eight cents is a joke. So to be clear, the video that I put yesterday, that was the COLA cost of living adjustment. And they negotiate that, you know, beginning of a contract. And they say throughout the term of the contract, we're going to give these people about five to six thousand dollars more. So it may be a three year contract. So within the next three years, they'll get five to six thousand dollars more. It sounds like a lot, right? If you make it forty five grand and then you're like, oh, yeah, it was in five years. I'll be at fifty one grand. It's good. It's good. But when you see how it's broken up into small increments, you're like, well, oh, eh, forty eight cents is a joke. It's really not because it's a thousand dollars more a year. So, you know, take it for what it's worth, because again, that's just one part of it. And there is going to be, more. I don't know if there's going to be more until we get our next contract, but that's kind of how things go. Just to clear that up for you guys, let's talk about Mr. DeJoy. I think we wasted enough time. DeJoy pledges to trim workforce costs as USPS continues to lose more money than expected. The title alone is alarming. He's pledging, hey man, we're going to cut workforce costs. What is the workforce? Exactly. We are the workforce, but it's also management. So let's not uh, get in the uproar yet. He says, the Postal Service has found some success in eliminating costs from its network, but overall expenditures spiked in the most recent quarter. Hmm. The Postal Service lost $1.7 billion from April to June of this year. We don't want to talk about how much they lost. Postmaster General once again recognizing the mail agency's finances are not in the place he had hoped for by this point in his tenure, but vowed to double down on and accelerate his proposed reforms to right the ship. Among the solutions, he said, would be significantly reducing work hours by closing some facilities and removing other inefficiencies. What does that mean? Y'all are in the comment section now losing it. He's going to close some facilities that don't make him money. I understand that. That makes sense. 
I talked about it once before. You got tiny post offices. You got two people working in a tiny post office. You might got 10 people that come in there throughout the day. They may spend 300 bucks tops, right? But you got two postal employees working in there and we ain't getting paid no small money. You got to pay for the electricity. You got to pay for the employee. You got to pay for everything, the, the, the insurance, all the stuff that goes with the employee, all the supplies, so, yeah, I understand that. Um, and, and it's just a lot of people don't realize how much uh, money each person costs regardless. Not only do you have your salary. Think about this for a second before we move forward. You have your salary from a business standpoint. And I only know this because I've had a few businesses from a business standpoint. Yes, you may make 500 bucks a week. Great. Okay. You got to pay your own taxes on that. But now I'm supplying you with the 401k. In our, for instance, we're getting the FERS, Federal Employee Retirement System, and the, um, the TSP. So I'm giving money in that as well. The business owner. Right. And then I still have to pay for your health insurance, although you pay some of it. I pay a majority of it, right? Health insurance is expensive. If it's not just you, it's your whole family. Think about how much you're paying for a family plan. You're paying a fraction of what I pay, okay? Don't start fretting your face because this is, I'm talking to you from a business standpoint. So from your 500, that was just your salary. We did the TSP, we did the FERS, we did the insurances, right? We did everything that goes into you as the employee, the average, and this is a, this is a true statistic. The average employee that only makes 45 grand a year costs the post office almost $90,000 a year in order to, for me to pay you 45 grand a year, it's costing me 90 grand a year. Look on a bigger scale. Now you got the people that's making a hundred grand a year. They're spending almost twice to keep that person employed. Well, uh, damn, Jay, we need to get rid of all the managers. I, hey, this is not about a debate. I'm just giving you some of the facts, okay? That's with any place, any place, okay? So I'm paying for your vacations. Think about that. Think about that. You're not at work and I'm paying for your vacations. You still getting paid for it. You earn sick leave. How do you think you earn that? Where does that money come from? It doesn't come from you putting into your sick leave. It comes from the employer, me, the businessman. So it costs a lot of money to employ each person. And then to top it off, we, we talk about our uniform allowances. Man, my uniform allowance sucks. I only get 300 bucks. 300 bucks for the carriers. That's 300,000 carriers. A year, yeah, 300 times 300,000 carriers a year. Where's it coming from? It's coming from me, the employer. Jay, you sounded like management now. No, I'm talking to you like a businessman. So when he talking about cutting costs, this is what I, a hey, workforce costs. The Postal Service law losses marked a dramatic downturn from the third quarter of the fiscal 2022 when the agency primarily due to one-time benefits of the passage of the Postal Service Reform Act turned a profit of 60 billion. Spoke about that a while ago. But now it's saying first class mail volume declined by 6% this quarter compared to prior year through its revenue increase by 4% due to significant increase in mail prices. Marketing mail volume dropped by 16%. Okay, so first class mail, just mail you mail in, it, the volume declined. So people stopped sending as much first class mail by 6%. All right. And the revenue increased by 4%. They charged more for a service. Yes, the money went up, but the volume went down. The money went up. You spend a little bit more money. Yeah, there's people still stayed there. So they made a little bit of money, but they lost a lot of customers, okay? Marketing mail volume dropped by 16%. Marketing mail. Marketing mail is ads, advertising. 
that dropped by 16%. All the stuff that pays us. DeJoy cited a market-wide cutback in advertising spending, significant inflation costs, and required overpayment into the agency pension fund as the primary driver of cost overruns, noting those factors added $6 billion to his expenditures. Man, um, I don't know, but his next statement was, this will require the projected lower inflation rates to be experienced, continue to be more aggressive cost reductions to our operations, cost reductions to our operations, increased market dominant and package revenue. They want to get into this package revenue thing. They want to try to compete with UPS and FedEx, which is, that means carrier work, but that means work for everybody. You know, because the volume of the machines, they're going to work. Somebody's got to move these packages around the plants. So, um, exceptional management execution. I don't know if we have exceptional management because our man, mm, let me stop. The usual great support from our employees and cooperation from our stakeholders, DeJoy said. No, no, no. He says, in addition to projected cuts, DeJoy said USPS will make investments and grow revenue. Investments. Yes, he's buying these big buildings. In order to make revenue, you have to fill the big buildings with some type of money-making stuff. Mail or packages. Something is going to bring customers to us. This will include a variety of initiatives aimed at cashing in on its interconnected retail network and by capturing a larger market share in packages through its new streamlined shipping service. That's a joke, that streamlined shipping. So that is just clown work. I'm going to stop right there. But it says um, variety of initiatives. They're going to give people initiatives to mail with us. Hey, look, if you mail couple different things will give you a disc i don't know exactly what he's trying to do with this but it's weird but y'all worried about your jobs and that's exactly what I'm, I'm i'm reading it they're gonna probably do more of what they've been doing less overtime less hiring um getting more machines to do the work which i've been talking about for over a year now um but here's the thing i'm not gonna drag this out if you see things like this happening at your facility. Not everybody walks around and pays attention, but people read comments. If you see it, drop your information in the comment. Hey man, I'm over here at Dallas. And uh, yeah, they started buying all these new blah, blah, blahs. There's a new machine in here. We used to have 10 people working at that spot, but now we only got four. That's what we're talking about. Okay, so if you see it, say something about it because people are reading it. Trust that, even if somebody doesn't thumb you up, People read these comments. Trust that. So, again, it's up to you. It's up to me. Share information with this little community. And hopefully, you know, one day we'll make this a better place and I'll sit by the campfire and sing Kumbaya. And on that note, this is JH. And I'm out. Unexpected expenses stressing you out? Get the money you need now with Loans for Feds, a program designed specifically for federal employees. Bad credit is not a problem. Application is fast and easy with same-day approvals. Apply now.